Hello MUS 1002 students. In this video, we are going to go over the basic operational principles of synthesizers. But before we go any further, you are going to want to go to vcvrack.com and download the free version of VCV Rack. Simply go to the website, click on Available Now, and go down to Get Rack 2. You only need the free version, so do not purchase anything. Just download the free version for Windows, Mac, or Linux, whichever your system is. Uh, on top of that, while there is an extensive library of sounds, we will only be discussing and using the built-in modules. So, how do synthesizers work? Well, at their most basic, uh, synthesis is creating a sound from scratch according to an algorithm. All synths operate on this principle. Modular synthesis means that every module that we use has a specific function. Some are oscillators. They create the vibrations that are used to create audio. Some are amplifiers. They raise or lower the audio level. Uh, some are going to do things like uh, generate envelopes that control the amplifier. Some are going to mix different signals together, and some will modulate these. We connect all of these modules together with cables to form a synthesizer patch. The cables can carry both audio and control voltage, which is electrical current used to control pitch, change parameters, trigger modules, or serve to otherwise control parts of the synth. Uh, we will be doing this virtually, but the principle is the same if you're working with a hardware synthesizer. Again, at its most basic, a synthesizer takes input from an input device. It passes that input to an oscillator in the form of a volts per octave, or V slash O, signal, and passes a gate signal to open the envelope. When you hit the key, that sends a gate. It keeps sending that information as a gate as long as you hold it down. And then when you release it, the gate turns off and the sound will die away. The waveform from the oscillator is then passed to a filter and the sound is shaped to remove unwanted sounds. The filter is passed to an amplifier to boost the signal before being sent to the final outputs. This is boosted by taking the gate signal from the keyboard, sending that to an envelope to open up the controls of the amplifier. And here we can see the most basic possible patch. At the left, I have a MIDI 2CV module. This is being used to take information from my computer keyboard, the, uh, the QWERTY one, not a piano style keyboard, send volts per octave to the VCO or voltage controlled oscillator, send a gate to the ADSR envelope generator. I have re-trigger information also going to the envelope generator. The sawtooth output of my oscillator goes to the input of a voltage-controlled amplifier, and the output of the amplifier goes to my filter. I also have the output from the ADSR envelope going to two places. I have it going to control the amplifier and to the cutoff frequency of my filter. The output of my filter the low pass frequency or low pass filter output goes to my speakers on the Audio 8 device. So let's talk about some of the abbreviations and what they mean. Uh, you'll hear VC a lot. That stands for voltage control. Uh, it is commonly used in analog synthesis and analog modeling programs like VCV Rack to show that the object is receiving voltage and not generating voltage. Uh, DC, on contrast, is digital control. 
Uh, it is very, very rarely used as most digital modules are still receiving voltages for control purposes, but you may see this in hardware. LF stands for low frequency. This is commonly used to describe modules that operate below the range of human hearing, typically in the form of an LFO or low frequency oscillator, which is a modulation tool. Uh, then we have envelope generators, and they come in a variety of types, but the most common are AD for attack decay, AR for attack release, and ADSR for attack decay, sustain, and release. Uh, that last one, ADSR, is probably the single most common type, and it's the one that we're going to be looking at. Be aware that in VCV rack, cable colors are random. They do not correspond to signal. Uh, if you are building the synth patches out of the book, your cable colors will look different from what I have created for the illustrations. Don't worry about it. Uh, also, with any type of synthesizer, be aware that there is no difference between audio and CV or control voltage cables. And in fact, you can patch audio into a CV input or CV into an audio input. The ones that we are really concerned about, though, are V-Oct, or volts per octave. That is the standard for pitch in modular synthesizers, and it's typically one volt of electricity per octave, which makes it really easy to divide everything into pitches, just by dividing by 12, or into microtonal intervals by dividing by larger numbers. Gate generates a pulse similar to a square wave. Again, it goes high or on when you trigger it, and as long as you hold down the trigger, whether that's a key, whether it is a sequencer uh, step, it will stay open and sustaining, and as soon as you move off of that trigger, it immediately dies down and is released. Uh, this is very useful for envelopes in particular or anything that you are trying to control that has to stay open. Triggers and re-triggers are similar to gates, but they're one-shots. Uh, it's a blip. You hit it and the signal goes to its maximum value, then immediately goes down. There is no sustain. So this is really useful as a clock source or for triggering events that happen and die away on their own. Then clock signals are just repeated trigger pulses that occur at set intervals. These are typically used to control the timing of a sequencer, to sync oscillators, or to otherwise control repeating events. Uh, they can also be used in place of gate or trigger signals to control timing of sequences, or to create glitchy effects, say, in uh, a voltage-controlled amplifier. So, let's take a look at the parts of the synthesizers and the modules that you will need in subsequent videos. The first major one is MIDI to CV. This takes the input from a MIDI controller, if you have one, your computer's keyboard, if you don't, or in some cases, an attached gamepad, and outputs it all as control voltage signals so that you can control other modules. To use it, you click the top line, which in the illustration says no driver, to select the driver. On your Mac, this will say Core MIDI. On Windows, there will be different options based on uh, your hardware interface. And in every case, there will also be the option for computer keyboard. The second line controls the device. So if you are using Core MIDI on a Mac, you can then select attached MIDI devices. Uh, if you're using a hardware MIDI on a PC, you can select the actual device, not just the uh, driver there. And if you're using the computer keyboard, you would just tell it QWERTY keyboard. The bottom line controls the channel. We're just going to leave that alone with channel one. Uh, for the outputs, think of volts per octave as pitch, gate as the trigger signal that stays on until you release a key, uh, vel is velocity, which we won't be really using. Same with aft or aftertouch. 
Uh, PW is pitch wheel. So if you have a MIDI keyboard attached and you have a pitch wheel, you can use this to do pitch bends. Uh, MW is the modulation wheel. And RETR is re-trigger, which is really useful if you're playing very fast and you need to reset the oscillator or the envelope generator, so the VCO or the ADSR module. Uh, the VCO is the voltage controlled oscillator. This is the main source for pitch and timbre in a synth. By default, most of them will produce the basic four waveforms, sine, triangle, sawtooth, and pulsed width modulation also known as a square wave. But they have some additional controls here. Uh, volts per octave takes the voltage from the input device and use it that to set the pitch in relation to the frequency knob position and any fine tuning addition, uh, additional knobs that it might have. FM is the input for frequency modulation, which is controlled by that little attenuator knob above it. Uh, at its center point, there is no frequency modulation. As you increase it to the right, it adds frequency modulation. And as you take it to the left, it subtracts from the frequency. Uh, PWM controls the offset of the pulse width. At dead center, it is a square wave, but play around with it and move it to the left or to the right, and you'll hear how it changes the timbre. The other important one is sync, which resets the phase of the waveform being generated to zero when it's triggered. Um, again, this is very useful if you're playing very, very fast or if you're using fast sequences, uh, but otherwise you can probably not worry about it. There is an additional uh, noise generator called noise that you should be aware of, which just outputs noise. Uh, there is no input, it's all outputs, and you have different types of noise, like white noise, which is pure random frequencies occurring across every frequency simultaneously. Uh, pink noise, which applies equal power across the octave bands. So it's going to sound slightly more bassy than white noise. Uh, red noise, which is pink noise with a steeper roll off, so it sounds even more weighted towards lower frequencies. Uh, blue, which is the inversion of red noise, so it's going to really bring out the higher frequencies uh, to a pretty extreme uh, amount. Uh, violet, which is inverted pink noise, so again, it's gonna have more higher frequencies, but not as much as blue noise. Uh, gray is random noise subjected to a psychoacoustic equal loudness curve. And black, in this case, is gray noise with a slight bias towards the higher registers. Both the oscillator and the noise module can be shaped by filtering. And to do that, we use the VCF, or Voltage Controlled Filter. You send a signal into the input, and then, using the controls, it will filter and remove frequencies. Uh, it outputs either low-pass filter or a high-pass filter. And the way that that works is that the cutoff knob or the cutoff input controls the frequency at which the filter takes effect. Uh, you can fine-tune that by sending additional voltage to cut and then upping or subtracting from the knob above that. Uh, but at that point where the cutoff takes effect, if you are using a low pass filter output, anything above that will be rolled off and you won't hear those higher frequencies. If you're using the high pass, then it lets anything that is above the cutoff go through and everything else is attenuated. Uh, you can control the res or resolution or Q factor of the filter with the res knob and the res input. Uh, you can also control the internal amplification of the filter with the drive knob and input. Uh, all of these have modulator depth knobs and inputs, so you can modulate these 
and use them to create cool effects. Uh, there are many, many, many other types of filters that exist. I am personally partial to what's called a low-pass gate, uh, and you can find a lot of those in the VCV rack library. The VCA is the amplifier, specifically a voltage-controlled amplifier. It takes an audio signal or a control voltage signal in the in input and boosts it according to the level setting, which is the unlabeled input. Typically, that is going to be controlled by the output of an envelope generator like the ADSR. Then the output is that control. So this allows you to take a constant uh, droning oscillator synth sound, plug it into the input, and then use the ADSR to control when the note plays, how long it plays, and when it stops. In any case, this requires an envelope signal from the generator to open, sustain, and close the amplifier to its maximum level. Uh, also, be aware that that LED strip is a control. So if you want it to only go to a maximum level of 75%, you can drag it down a little bit or drag it up. Uh, it will take any valid envelope signal and again, you can use this to attenuate or boost other non-audio signals. It can have some very interesting results with control voltage. Uh, but what if you want more than one VCA? Obviously, you can create multiples of these, but you can also use the mixer, which is an alternate version that allows you to mix four signals together and output the individual channels or the mix. So the controls, you have the uh, levels and you have the mix. These are the global controls. And you can control the mix level by putting in a CV uh, control from an envelope or from uh, some other source. Each individual level fader uh, which is labeled one to four, has a CV input as well. So you could put individual envelope controls into all of those, or you could just do everything at once by patching it to the CV attached to mix. Uh, you also have inputs for each channel. So if you had multiple oscillators or multiple audio signals, you could put one into input one, another one into two, one into three, one into four. And then using channel one, two, three, and four outputs, you could send those to different destinations. Or you could take the mix output and send that to the final output, say, your speakers. Uh, it's a very, very useful module to have. Uh, but here we get to the really important one, ADSR. Uh, this is the envelope generator, and it generates an attack, decay, sustain, release envelope when it receives a gate signal in the gate input or when you hit the push button. Um, I recommend using gate, but uh, it's, it's nice to have the push button because then you can test it. It also has a re-trigger input or RETR, which restarts the envelope instantly, which is extremely useful if you're playing very, very fast parts and you don't want to wait for it to close. But uh, this will output the envelope signal, and you can use it from uh, the envelope output on pretty much anything. Uh, envelopes can be used to change pitch. They can be used to change the cutoff frequency of a filter. They can be used to change the amplification level, uh, feedback on delay, pretty much anything. So all of the controls have CV and depth knobs, and these are the really, really important uh, controls. Attack, or ATT, controls how long it takes to ramp up to max volume when a gate signal triggers the ADSR envelope generator. Decay controls how long it takes to ramp to the sustain level. Sustain is a percentage of the max volume uh, that the envelope stays at until it's released and then the release says, okay, uh, the gate signal has stopped. How long does it take for the envelope 
to release or die down back to fully off. Uh, these are very, very useful. You have individual sliders and they can all be modulated as well. And when we start building some of the synth patches, you'll see exactly how these work. Uh, delay is another important module. It is a delay effect that is applied to an input signal. And then you take the mix, uh, which is a mixture of both the dry or unprocessed and wet or processed version of the signal. Uh, or you can just take the wet output, which is whatever has been processed and delayed. Uh, here you've got a couple of different parameters. You have time, which controls the length of the delay. Uh, FDBK, or feedback, controls how much of the delay circuit is not just output, but fed back to its own input without any cabling. Uh, this allows the signal to die away more like an echo rather than just a single repetition. Uh, tone shapes the color of the delay through internal filtering. And again, mix is the blend of the dry or unprocessed signal and the wet or processed signal that comes out of the mix output. Uh, this is also really cool. If you have a clock signal, you can plug it into the clock or CLK inlet, which will create a synced delay time. That just overwrites the time parameter and says, here are my pulses. They're occurring at this regular amount of time. So that is going to be how everything is delayed. Uh, we also have the sequencer. And this is the big one. So um, it's always a little bit interesting. Let's just get this out of the way. The sequencer is outputting voltage. It is not outputting pitch and it's not outputting rhythm. Uh, every single one of these uh, three rows, you just have a set of dials and you turn them to dial in a voltage. Uh, the output comes from CV1, CV2, or CV3. Uh, one is the top row, two is the middle row, and three is the bottom row. You also have a uh, trigger output. So if a step is triggered, it will output that uh, trigger whenever the step has occurred. Uh, but think of it as creating multi-stage series of values going left to right based on the tempo. So you can use the internal tempo or you can use the tempo in to set how fast it will cycle through the different steps or columns that are in the sequencer. You can use the steps knob to control the number of steps anywhere from one all the way up to eight. Uh, then you have run. There is a button or there is an input that will require a uh, toggle from a gate or from a trigger. Uh, it must be turned on in order to start outputting values from the sequencer. Uh, clock uh, can also be used. Uh, you have the internal tempo. Uh, or you can use clock to uh, clock based on the tempo. And every time it receives a clock signal, it will go to the next step. Uh, but again, each row has eight dials that can be independently set to produce the different values. They have little buttons underneath them uh, that can be turned on or off for each row. If they are on, then they will output whenever that step is triggered. If they are not, then it will be silent and nothing will be output. Uh, they can be independent or you can take uh, the CV1 to do the top row, two for the middle row, three for the bottom. Uh, but if you want independent, you can take the individual black outputs under each row and send it to a different device, which can be very cool if you're working with, say, a percussion sequencer. But without having a uh, way to get these to the speakers, it's all just kind of theoretical. And to do that, we use Audio 8. Uh, this is an 8-channel audio input. Uh, you're really just going to be using the section that is labeled 2 device and then the inlets 1 and 2. So the two white inputs for 1 and 2, uh, unless you have more than three speakers. Uh, you just connect that. And one 
is your left speaker and two is your right speaker. Uh, in order to use this though, you need to click on the lines. They currently say no driver, no device, and then they've got uh, KHZ and uh, the block size. So first click on the line that says no driver and select your audio driver. On Mac, this will be core audio. On Windows, it will probably be WAS API, uh, unless you have an external sound interface and then it will be uh, ASIO. Then you click on your device on the second row. On either Mac or Windows, this will probably just be the one that says speakers. There will be different options like Apple, MacBook speakers, uh, Realtek speakers, whatever. If you are running headphones, you would want to choose the headphones uh, version instead so that you're not disturbing your roommates, children, small pets, uh, parents, friends, whoever. Uh, then for the uh, KHZ, that is the sample rate. You don't need to worry about that unless you are getting really weird audio artifacting, and then you need to set up a time to meet with me so that we can test it. Uh, and same with the block size. You can ignore those bottom two boxes on that third row. Um, again, the two device sends audio to your selected audio driver, so out of VCV rack and into your speakers. But it also has from device. And this is really cool. This takes audio from your selected driver in to VCV rack so that you can run it through signal processing like a delay line, or you can mix it with synth sounds. So I could take a microphone that's connected to channel one on my audio interface, take that from from device one and use the volume of myself talking into the mic to control the amplifier on the VCA. It's a very cool modulation source, uh, but unfortunately we're not going to have a lot of time to play around with that in this class. A couple of conventions before we get into actually building some patches. All modules in VCV can be reset to their initial state by right-clicking and selecting initialize. So if you make a mistake and all of a sudden you twisted a knob and you can't figure out where to set it again, just right click and select initialize. Uh, you can also randomize all of the modules by right clicking on them and then selecting randomize. I don't necessarily recommend this, but it can be a cool option. Under the view menu, there is a very useful option that says lock modules. Uh, all of the modules can be dragged and dropped and reordered however you desire, but using lock modules, it prevents them from accidentally being dragged when you meant to drag and move a cable. Uh, cables are infinitely stackable. Normally, you would just click on an input and drag your mouse over to the output or click on an output and drag the mouse over to an input. But if you want to stack it, it's really easy. You just hold control on a PC or command on a Mac and click on the jack that you want to add another cable to, and it will stack a cable on top. Uh, but those are just some conventions. The next couple of videos, we're going to go over how to build some basic synth patches in VCV Rack. We're just going to be using the computer uh, QWERTY keyboard and your basic speaker outputs. Nothing too crazy, although if you want to get crazy, there are thousands of free modules available in the VCV Rack library that you can download for free. And there are tons and tons of YouTube tutorials, as well as some really, really great books uh, like Fred Welsh's uh, Guide to Synthesizers, Mark Vale's book, uh, Darwin Gross's uh, book on different synthesizer modules. Uh, many, many, many ways to explore this. But for now, let's start building some synth patches.